Hi everybody, how are you? Hello, hello. Hi, Facebook friends. Facebook friends, we're having such a good time. We're having matcha tea, and I'm having tea time with Helen Arcantu, CEO of the YWCA for the county. And the thing that I think is very exciting right now is I think it's a historic moment because we're doing two Facebook Lives in stereo simultaneously on the YWCA Burton County page as well as... As Ed, Supermodel Emmy, Emmy and Emmy Style. It's so exciting, I think. Right? I love it. I, I love, love it. it. And we're marking the occasion with watermelon matcha. Yeah, I, I've never had this before. Now, I personally love matcha tea. I like it hot in the morning and sometimes when I want to switch it back and forth. And so Helen and I have a very dear friend that's a mutual, you know, friend yes. of ours that we learned after we first met. Hi, Hi Dale. Dale. Hi, Dale. Dale. From True Models. Um, so, another CEO. Female yes. CEOs rock. We like female CEOs. That's they right. totally rock. And I'm a big swimmer at the YWCA over here in Ridgewood, and I, um, we, we were like on a panel or something. And, right. We were together on a panel. We spoke about redefining leadership yeah. and how it's different for women today than it was. Yes. We sat next to each other. Yes. And we bonded yes. over swim and matcha. <laughs> and women's empowerment. And, you know, we believe in the same thing. That's right. And we're doing the same thing, but in different ways. Mm -hmm. But we're starting to do it together. Absolutely, I'm having tapioca too. Yeah. Um, She's got bubbles in there. I have no bubbles. She has bubbles. Absolutely. Um, when I learned about the YWCA and how there's initiatives with helping women with rape, with um, being able to speak out and get help from the YWCA and all the different programs that they have, I thought, you know what, it's time to try and figure out how we can collaborate. And there's other programs that you're working on that we haven't really discussed so much about, so I'd love to hear more about how we can help women in the Bergen County community. So our Healing Space program is what you're referring to, this, which is our space. Sexual Violence Resource Center. It's a 24-hour hotline, so anyone who has been you know, living or dealing with sexual assault in some way can call in and get a support seven days a week, 24 hours a day. If they need someone to meet them at a hospital, at an emergency room, at the police station, we're able to dispatch someone out to assist them with that. We have counseling, we have education services in the community, and that's a key program of the YWC in Berkeley County, but we also do lots of other great programming for women, children, and families. Um, we have a program uh, that's getting ready to launch right now called really? Startup that PSC and G and TD Bank are funding for Good us. Good job, you guys that's, and yeah, gals. Yeah, yeah. Really, that's We're a so great support. We're so grateful to our funders, um, and they are helping us get women's ideas and making them into small businesses. So we're working with a woman called Co Player who's going to come in and help them take their idea and make it into a business. So I think it's work, brilliant. We can work with 15 women, so if you're out there and you're interested in being one of the 15 women we're working with, this program is launching in October, and we would love to So how do they get a hold of you to be able to get involved? Just go to our website and send us an email that you're interested is? in the startup program, ywcabergencounty.org. Find okay. us there. That's right. And so one of the key points of having your dreams come true is sometimes having mentorship and having guidance and understanding how to market yourself and how to put what you want out there in a way that's organized and understandable by a lot of people. And we also have a great mentorship program because we believe in mentors in our Empower You program, which is our Girls Leadership Academy. That last night, um, Project Bank actually gave us a lovely donation to support that program. That also cheers. AAU, yes, cheers. Cheers. Green team. Cheering Green team to you. To AAW. Oh yeah. Clink, oh yeah. Clink, clink, clink. Um, uh, have fun with that program. The sponsors. Yes. Can't do anything without the money, um, so please support us. But that's a 10-month program for girls that are sophomores in high school. They get to meet over 60 mentors over the course of the year. Women talk about their careers and how they got to them, and um, you know, learn other great things about how to, you know, body image. They learn about money management. They learn about how to, you know, be responsible with the environment. So it's another wonderful program. What a wonderful, wonderful program. So, talk to me more about the, the sexual violence uh, initiatives that you have at the Y. Um, do you see that there's a, an increase of rape, or are more women actually stepping up and saying, this is what's going on in my life, um, I'm being battered, I'm being abused, or is it, talk to me just about the rape itself. Well, you know, reporting is always a challenge. I mean, the numbers are really one in five women, you know, one in five individuals, you know, are living with being sexually assaulted. But what we do know is that, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, cases like the Stanford rape case have brought a lot of attention to the issue. 
and um, in some ways are just making it much more of an acceptable conversation. Um, and the outrage attached to the sentence, you know, that was uh, attached to that case. Um, which, also, which was, which was? Which was that the, the guy got almost nothing. And the, the judge basically said, the judge is the father of the actor, basically said, you know, I don't want my son's life to be ruined over a 20-minute act. How do you feel about that? I want to hear how you feel about that because we're going to be turning this around like I normally do during Facebook live chats with everybody. And I want to know how you feel about how rape is being addressed in our country. Um, well, what you should know is you can download our Healing Space app. Okay. Um, how do you do go that? Go to the Apple Store or if you're on Android, go to your application store and search Healing Space. And we have an app and that will access you to any kind of services if you've been sexually assaulted or if you know someone who's been sexually assaulted. Not only will it do that, but there's messages for safety in there that you can pre-program. So if you're walking somewhere and you're feeling Healing safe, space. Yeah. Healing space on the iTunes? Yes. Yeah. And we'll be sure to put all that in the comments after we're all done so that okay. you can know and find information. What an incredible resource. I have to say we're very I'm doing another change to you. Yeah, yeah, cheers, cheers. Really. Yeah. I mean, we need as much help as possible to be able to get that word out there. And, and empowerment and messaging. So tell us a little bit about some of what you're doing around that because, I mean, we're obviously, I'm biased thinking we do great stuff at the YWC Burton County, but you do. you're doing amazing stuff as thank well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am working on a and, new book. And it takes a village, so we all have to be doing it and talking about it. That's right. So it takes a village. So we book. support each other as women and other women that we know, and uh, we also, you know, whenever I'm doing a, a, a podcast or anything, that I always call in my troops and, and be able to get to Support. So I'm working on um, this new book called Curvy and Confident, and love, 101 love, love stories. Thank you, thank you. 101 stories of loving yourself and your body. And uh, during the editing process, I've been reading hundreds and hundreds of these stories of women and certain men that really have this uh, aha moment of like, wait a minute, why are women beating themselves up so much? So the, so the, the journey to loving the, the encasement of our souls, um, it takes time. It really takes time. And it takes sometimes horrific things in our life to be able to uh, get us to say, wait a minute, I'm not going to do my do this any longer, beating myself up, feeling bad, I'm going to get to a place of acceptance. And so this book is a celebration of so many different <laughs> stories from around the world. And there's one in this book that you're going to love. It's a goddess story of a, from a man's point of view. You're just going to love it. So anyway. Well, I can't wait for the book to come out. So you can come to the YW. Yeah, we'll, do a book we'll do a signing. signing good, good, good. But I, I have to say, to we owe you a debt of gratitude because you, yourself, have redefined for your entire career, you know, redefined the way you look at women and body image because of you very gratefully and thankfully sharing your story of your life in your books prior, which people should go out and read if you haven't because, you know, you really, um, and I had the opportunity to sit with you on the panel, so I even heard, you know, some more, you know, detailed stories about that, but Thank you really, you. really have brought attention yeah. to something and made it something that every woman can really wrap their head around and feel a tremendous, you know, comfort level with. Thank you. I, it takes a village once again because yeah. I might be the, the mouthpiece and talking about it, but I had such an opportunity to travel all around the United States for two decades, as well as around the world, and talk and listen to so many women, whether they were very thin, whether they were very large, whether they were in between all the cues of color skin. All of us, this is a woman's issue to claim oneself as unique and special and preciously divine. Well, it's courageous. It's Thank courageous you. that you have And there's so many women that now that well, are doing incredible things, like you, Ashley, yes, and Vibetza, you know, yeah. all these wonderful But you things. started the trend. I mean, I really think you were the trendsetter. You started it. I, I mean, was a loud mouth. I, I was a really loud one for many courage. years. But that's courage. Women women know we have to somehow become spokespeople and harness that courage. And I have to tell you a story. This is a God's honest uh -oh. story. Uh-oh. We're I live, was, remember. I know, but it's a story you're going to like because it's part of what an inspiration you are. Okay. Okay. Women, and I share it oh my because gosh, she's so sweet. I was at um, Chelsea Market with a girlfriend, my friend Margarita, recently, and we were chatting and talking about um, inspirations. And um, she's been taking some classes at FIT, and I'm very interested in fashion. And um, she, out of nowhere, mentions that you, not knowing.
knowing our connection and our friendship, right. mentions that you are an inspiration to her and this creativity that she's trying to, she's an attorney, okay. but that she's like harnessing in her life right on. around What's your passion, margarita. Margarita. <laughs> and job, woman. <laughs> nice job. So you are such an inspiration. Here, she had no idea your connection to me, and I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> she is an inspiration, and I can say it personally, because I know you and know what an inspiration you are. So, That's so sweet. So you are changing lives and, and, and really impacting people in a really positive way with all you do and Thank share you. personal. And I know that that's an exposure to personally come out and share those stories. And it's hard for women sometimes to do that, but it really does help other women. It does. It really does. And one other thing that I want thank you and thank you for sharing that story. That's really, really sweet. Um, one thing that I'm working on is called Fashion Without Limits. And Fashion Without Limits is a really, really cool partnership with Syracuse University and other universities that are thinking about teaching future designers within the educational system, within design schools, how to create an inclusive fashion line, whether it's size zero up to 24, because right now in design schools, the, the, the curriculum, actually, the dress forms are only size two, four, and six. Some are size eight. And I started thinking, well, if we have 100 million women that are size 14 or 12 and above, I said, oh, hello, yeah. what about us? And I said, why don't we just start in the educational system and start having curriculum and Jeffrey Mayer over at Syracuse University and Tom Conover and the university itself. They've all gotten behind this. We now have freshmen through seniors creating a um, creating on dress forms and learning about draping and pattern making and creating beautiful garments ready to wear we have a big we have a big emmy and fashion initiative award that goes on every year and um it's i said to the students i said if you get involved in this when you graduate you can have all this experience you're going to get paid more than other designers because a lot of people are trying to figure out how do you go ahead and, and create garments for women who are above a size 14. it's a very very cool initiative so so here's something and i know this is a lot of how we bond are you enjoying your tea i love my tea. I, I really well, so you know I love my tea. I know. So, Emmy will tell you what a kook I am about tea because the first time we had like gal pal time after we were on the panel together, right? And we were supposed to be talking business. Literally, what did I do? I ran and got a bag of tea, like a crazy person. I was so happy. And I pulled out loose teas, matcha teas, green teas, I, and talked tea. Huge, huge bag of tea. And I was, and she was like the tea lady. I was like, I think I just found like a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, a little fun. Yeah. But I think, and the thing that we bonded over, which is one of the things I thought we should talk about to all of our friends today, is like wellness and ritual, and how to create some of that in your life because we're busy ladies. Very. We're busy in different ways, you know, we're in different, like, we have different things going on in our lives, but we're both really, really busy. And we need rituals that are healthy and full, filled with wellness for us to, to help us fuel all that we do and so that we always can stay on top of all the many things that we're juggling. So, we so one of one of my rituals, right, which, which literally not only feeds me, but feeds me in every way, mm -hmm. is tea. So I'm a big fan why of tea. Why do you like green tea so much? Tell us like why it's so so healthy for you, because I get a boost like better total, than any coffee, but I do like coffee every I once in a while. I know. I'm really I working on trying to get her out of that habit. Mm. You know, I'm working on to get my husband out of it for a really long time, but I'm working on him too. <laughs> so I've been drinking green tea for decades now. So um, I like to say, I don't know how old I look, but... Um, you look beautiful and young and fresh like a daisy. I love that. What did I turn this year? I just had a birthday on September 15th, and um, I think I turned was it? I turned 47 or 46. Okay, remember. good. So one of it them. doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, but I really do believe that part of the reason I stay healthy and I think stay looking young and vital and have the energy to feel young yeah. is because of all the green tea I drink. What um, you I put drink, into your body. Right, totally feeds you. And I have to say, I have a very busy lifestyle as. You know, I've got three-year-old twins, I've got 90-year-old parents, and I have a, an amazing full-time job at the YWCA as a CEO. Yes. I'm an adjunct professor at Montclair State. She has a State. lot of energy. I, I have a lot of energy, and I, and I think it comes a lot from, I do matcha every morning. Um, it takes time to make matcha. It does. So you, you just, it's really a Work. nice ritual. This is, is a great ritual. It's you get up. It's relaxing to do it. Do you whisk it. Stir, whisk it, whisk it. But if you feel like your life is too busy to 
do that, there are wonderful places like the Village Tea in Ridgewood, which is where we are right now, that make matcha for you and that you can kind of get that shot of energy. This is an iced matcha. I make it hot every morning, um, how I, like I make it. Um, I but, like it hot too. But I also, throughout the day, drink at least 32 ounces of loose leaf green tea throughout my day. I brew it and then I bring it with me on the go. Um, usually I can pull out of my pocket.